On today's episode, I've got 10 home hacks for you that will invite spring into your home. So let's get started on our first hack. Okay, so for our first home hack for spring, we are going to invite spring in with a scent. And I've got a simmer pot for you that's designed to smell like spring. So I really hope you enjoy this. You're gonna start with a pot of water. Now I got a lot of suggestions from you to get a mini crock pot for my simmer pots. And so I took that up and I got this one and I have to say, it is, it is better <laughs> if you really like to do simmer pots because you can set it and forget about it and then you don't have to worry about the water boiling off and all of that. Now, if you don't have one of these mini crock pots, you can still feel free to do it in a pot. That's how I've been doing it. Just need to watch it and make sure you turn down the temperature and add water as needed. So to that pot, we are gonna add a couple of sprigs of thyme. And I might've went a little heavy on this one, but you just need a couple of sprigs. The recipe calls for a handful of mint. <laughs> so whatever that means to you. And then you're gonna slice a couple of limes and put that in as well. Because I wanted to, the mintiness, because I really love mint, I added a little bit of mint extract, and then I also added a half a cap of vanilla that I got from Dominican Republic. <laughs> you don't need to use Dominican Republic vanilla, but just some kind of vanilla. And these ratios are kind of, you know, forgiving. You don't need to get out your measuring spoons or anything. I just kind of eyeballed what I thought. And then you set it on high at first, and then once it gets going, you can turn it back to either warm or low or whatever you want. And I have to say, this really does smell like spring. It smells so good. I wish you could smell it in here. If you could bottle up spring, I think it would smell a lot like this. And so I hope you enjoy that simmer pot. Our next home hack is a really simple and easy gift bag idea that is so cute and very springy Easter-ish. <laughs> All you're gonna need is a paper bag. Now, I had some white ones that I picked up at Walmart and I've had them for years. I didn't even have to go pick them up, but you could use a brown paper bag as well. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take that bag fold it kind of lengthwise, and you're gonna do kind of a curved triangle right on that folded edge. And what we're trying to mimic here is the look of Easter bunny ears. <laughs> and so we just do it on that center section, and then that's it. And then on the back of the bag, and you could do this on the front if you wanted to, but I, I decided to really go in with the, the, the Easter Bunny theme here. I took a little fuzzy ball that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and like, I think it's like a 10 or 12 pack. There's a lot in there. And then I just hot glued that to the bottom of the back of the bag or near the bottom. And so super cute little bunny tail is what we've got. Then you're gonna put whatever goodies or whatever gift or whatever you want to go into that bag. And then you're gonna take a beautiful ribbon of your choosing, whatever color you'd like, and tie a simple knot. As you're kind of cinching that in, you want to be careful and make sure that you're forming it into those kind of bunny ears that we're going for. And then to further embellish it, I just took a rose from a Dollar Tree bush, very simple, and hot glued that into place. But you could also just kind of tuck it down in there if you wanted to. But since I already had my hot glue gun out, I just glued it into place. And there you have it. A very simple, but very cute, springy slash Easter gift bag. How adorable is this, right? And you could change the size of it if you had a little bit larger bag. I just love this and I think it's so cute, so easy to do and I hope you enjoyed that hack. So for our next hack, you know I love to zhuzh up store-bought or bakery-bought cupcakes and cakes and turn them into something custom that looks like you got it at a high-end bakery or that you slaved hours for. <laughs> We're all busy, so we need a couple of shortcuts. So this time I got a Valentine's cake. Now let me caveat this with, if you can get a plain white cake from the bakery and you plan ahead, that's the way to go for sure. I'm always doing it kind of spur of the moment, last minute, and they need more time. <laughs> 
So this is for those of you who are like me. The first thing we're gonna do is put our cake into the freezer and then we're gonna let it sit there for at least 30 minutes, but you can leave it in for a couple of hours. We're gonna pull it out of the freezer and then you're left with something like this. All of the icing and decorations are frozen. So we can take a sharp knife and start to cut off all of the stuff. Now this time around, at your suggestion, I got some extra icing from the bakery. It was ready to go. I didn't even have to ask them for it, but if you're around there and they don't have it out, just ask for some extra icing. This will help with touch-ups. So we're gonna clean that up as good as we can have a glass of water there, sharp knife, paper towels. We're gonna scrape off as much as possible. Try to leave some of that decorative details if it has that, if you can. That will just make it look all the more custom. Then I used that under scraped off layer as like a crumb coat, if you will. And then I generously wiped on some more frosting and I was very generous with that. And then I took out some shredded coconut and we are going to sprinkle the entire outside with this shredded coconut. It will give a nice fluffy bunny-esque feel. <laughs> so onto this white frosting, very, very cute. Now we're gonna add some bunny ears and this is so simple. So at Michael's, I picked up some wire that already had some like raffia wrapped around it. So it was already kind of like brown rope, but you could take some like a wire coat hanger and maybe wrap some jute around it and cover it up. This one was ready to go, which I loved. <laughs> and so all you're gonna do is take these wires that I picked up at Michael's and fold them in half, making sure to make a point, and then you're going to kind of bend them into bunny ears. And so you're gonna need two since we're doing bunny ears. And then I kind of twisted them together a little bit at the bottom. And then because I wasn't sure if like the, the raffia would like get weird or maybe I want to use these in the future, I don't know. I took some press and seal saran wrap and wrapped the bottoms of those ears. And then I just shoved them into the top of our cake to emulate bunny ears, it's so cute. So at this point, I wanted to shish it up a little bit more and really bring in the spring. And you could do whatever flowers you want because I've seen these type of things like all over Pinterest. You'll see lots of variations of this idea. So this is not an original idea, but I just thought it was really cute. And I'm just showing you how to do it to a store-bought cake and make it look awesome. <laughs> so then we're gonna take three tulips. And these are the Real Touch tulips that I like to buy off of Amazon. They're beautiful. I have a whole bunch of them in white and I also have a whole bunch of them in my stash already from past episodes in pink and I just thought that they would look super cute. And they were already cut down to size so I just took three of those and then I proceeded to wrap the stems of those in the saran wrap as well and pushed those down into our cake. But you could use fresh, there's no rule that you could use fresh flowers but you wanna make sure that you're doing it right before your gathering because I'm sure they won't last very long. Anyways, I absolutely love how this turned out. If you're having a baby shower or a wedding shower or even a wedding and it's in the spring, I think this would look really, really cute for that. Obviously it would look really cute as a dessert for your Easter dinner or just any event, just to have it. <laughs> it is so cute. I love how this turned out and I hope it got your wheels spinning and that you can customize it for a look that works for you. pots are already orange. But for this next one, I took a saucer and a terracotta pot and I wanted them to be a little bit more orange, like a little more carrot-like. And so I just took some chalk paint and chalk painted the exterior of both of these items. Um, I did two to three coats just because I wanted it to not bleed through. You could leave it as is. I'm just saying, you don't have to do this part. You could also paint the carrot in a white color if you want it to kind of match in your, oh, that was a little Freudian slip. <laughs> We're making a little carrot jar. <laughs> I hadn't told you that yet, but there we go. Um, you could paint it white if it works better in your decor. And so 
then it's dry. This is so simple, you guys. The next thing I did is I took some Dollar Tree greenery, this like fern-like stuff that you, you've you seen. It's always at the Dollar Tree. I feel like I've never seen them out of this stuff. And then I just cut it off the stems and cut it down a little bit shorter. And then I used some hot glue and a lot of hot glue to kind of hold it into place. You could use some E6000 if you wanted to, but this little saucer is very, very light. And if you use the Gorilla Hot Glue, it will hold up, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, you just put it on the top as if it were like the top of a carrot and that's it. And then you take the saucer, put it on top of the terracotta pot and boom, you have a really cute carrot pot, <laughs> if you will, that you could put Easter goodies in or just have it out for display. It's super cute. Really brings in those garden vibes that just has like that spring vibe to me. I guess carrots don't come until later in the season, but for whatever reason, carrots are associated with spring. <laughs> so I just love this for the spring season and I hope you liked it too. This next hack is one that I've done in previous seasonal hacks. It's so simple. I'm just doing the spring version of it. We've done, I think, a fall and a, a Christmas one. I don't, I don't remember what we've done, but basically you're gonna take a clear vase, a beautiful one that you have, and then you're gonna take a second vase and set that on the inside of that vase. Then you're gonna fill it up with whatever you want. I, in my case, I'm filling it up with jelly beans. I could only find them at the Dollar Tree, so I had to buy a lot of bags. <laughs> There's probably a more economical way to do this, but you could do those chocolate covered one with a pretty silver foil. You could do just have a bigger space and gap and use your decorative eggs. That would be beautiful as well. So just fill it up with spring like stuff. And then what we're going to do is we are going to fill it up with the floral or branches of your choice. I got a couple of these bushes at Hobby Lobby of lavender, only because I don't have anything that seems springy and lavender to me seems springy. And so three bunches fit in the center of this, looks great. But you could go cut branches off of your apple tree, you could peach tree or whatever is blossoming and put that in the center and not spend any money. You can go out to your garden, whatever works for you. I bought mine, you can do that too, nobody's judging. <laughs> and there you have it, just a simple, beautiful spring-like arrangement that is easy and you can switch out with all of the seasons. It's so much fun, it's so easy to do. Anybody can do this, even if you don't have any floral arranging experience, you got this. And that's kind of the idea with the hacks. The quick, easy things that pretty much anybody can do. Keeping on theme with the lavender and kind of like an arrangement idea. I had some lavender from the Dollar Tree for years. I bought it last spring and it's just been sitting there and I now is the time to use it. You're gonna also get another one of those shorter Dollar Tree hurricane vases and what all we're gonna do is clip off. I think I used a total of four bushes. Again, if you have fresh lavender, that would totally be the way to go because it would smell so good, so spring-like. So if you got the fresh stuff, definitely go for it. If not, then go get the Dollar Tree stuff. Clip those all off. I started out by hot gluing them into place because I know that hot glue will eventually, you know, you can easily peel that off of a glass jar. I decided that that was a little too tedious and I, I burned myself. <laughs> So I decided to switch it up and I went and got kind of like a strong rubber band and wrapped that around. And then all I did was kind of just shove each one of my lavenders in place and the rubber band held it into place. I left the rubber band there and then I just took some ribbon and hot glued that around the center to kind of hide the mechanics of it and that's it. So easy, right? So then I just took a Dollar Tree candle, like a fake one, and put it in the center, and you have a really cute lavender wrapped base that's just super, super adorable. And I absolutely love this because of the simplicity and because of the spring type vibes that it gives. And I hope you enjoyed that too. Since you might
might be entertaining this time of year because of Easter and other events that might be happening this spring, I wanted to give you a couple of table setting ideas. So this first one is just gonna take a napkin of your choice and you are going to kind of open it up and then fold it in on itself on a 45 degree angle, if that makes sense. So you're kind of just wrapping it in on itself taking the tips in and then folding that in until you kind of have a like a long skinny thing with pointy ends. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that napkin and wrap it around one of your decorative eggs and then tie a little bow on top of that to hold it into place and kind of make it look like a a bunny, <laughs> that's the idea. Wrapped around a little egg and you could further embellish that by tucking in a small little floral to embellish it or you could leave it as is whatever really works for your decor and it's so simple right <laughs> so easy way to decorate your little table and you can just set that on the plate or whatever and there you have it Okay, so if you want to have like a very simple table setting that still feels very festive and special, I went to Hobby Lobby and bought these placemats. Now, you don't have to do these placemats. Really what you wanna focus in on is texture. I liked it because it was greenery and it added an interesting element. And then I always just use simple white dishes to dress them up. I don't have fancy china. Maybe one day I'll have one again. I've had it in the past, but I found that I didn't really use it and that white plates were really good for me. It's all about layering and layer it up however you want. Make sure you have a nice fabric napkin that always works really well to have an elevated filling. And then you can wash them up. Uh, white is good because you can bleach them. And then you put your napkin out. Then I add like a regular boxwood wreath or I've even used like a regular grapevine wreath in past when I've done some tablescapes. I've got Easter tablescapes in the past. So if you want to check those out, I'll list them below. But then what you can do is find these pre-made little nests they always have them every year with the little eggs in them and set them on top of the boxwood wreath and that's just got a really nice springy vibe to them it's all about just adding layers and textures now yes you have to lift them up and put them away when you eat but it's all about the presentation right <laughs> and it just makes it feel special and i think if you people feel special it's fun so anyways take that for what you will if you want more tablescape ideas like i said i'll list those below and hopefully you'll find something valuable there. This one was actually from a previous episode. Maybe you've seen it. A lot of you may not have. It was from, I think a couple of years ago. It's just a simple place card holder and you don't even have to use them as place card holders. You could make a whole bunch of them and do like a centerpiece if you wanted to. You can just take the principles of it. What I did is I got the little tiny terracotta pots from the Dollar Tree. I left them as is. You could paint them out to match your decor. I just left them as is. And what I was doing is I was knocking off a Pottery Barn one it was so easy and so much cheaper. So I put floral foam in the center and then I took a couple of those Real Touch tulips that we used on the cake. So you could do this and repeat the theme. It would look really great on a table if you're doing a whole dinner party. And you just shove a couple of those down into the foam. And then I covered up the mechanics with some just moss from the Dollar Tree, very simple, just kind of shove that down into it. And then to create like a little place card holder, all you need is some decorative wire. You can pick that up in the floral section at any craft store and you can take a pen and get it rolling and then you're just gonna roll a little curly cue and then have it come down and go straight and that will be your place card holder. You shove that down in the middle of the little tulip pot and put the place card names in there and it's super cute, super easy. So I hope you like that hack and switch it out, customize it for you and I hope it's helpful. Another 
little entertaining, easy treat slash decor, because I think food can definitely be decor as we have found out from the little Easter bunny cake we made earlier. It's so cute. I think it's totally decor. So what you can do is you can pick up a pound cake. Usually they're in like the uh, produce section near the strawberries and cut them into one inch slices. Then take an Easter egg cookie cutter, if that makes sense, and cut out the shape of eggs. Then I found these melting chocolates right here from Michael's Sweet Tooth Fairy brand. I had never seen this before and I thought it was so cute because this one's kind of a mint, like blue speckled egg look, right? With the little speckles in it, which you're trying to go for a lot of times with Easter eggs. And then this melting chocolate is like confetti white with little confetti in it. I thought these would be so cute on our little Easter egg treats. And so all you're gonna do is then melt the chocolate. Um, I think they just follow the directions on there. <laughs> And then you're gonna dip your eggs in it. You can use a bamboo skewer to dip it in the chocolate. If you need to kind of drizzle it on and, and do it that way, it's okay. Just get it on there. <laughs> and then let it sit and firm up. And then you have a speckled egg, super cute, fit for dessert, fit for decor, absolutely adorable. Display them on a really cute Easter plate. I found this really cute Easter bunny plate at Michael's again. I just thought it was adorable and I had to have it. <laughs> and I'm like, gonna, I'm gonna put it with my white stuff in here. I just love it. And so cute, so easy. Sure to impress, looks super high end. I think they're super cute as is and a fun little treat. I won't be eating that because I'm eating a lot cleaner now, but you know, the kids deserve a little treat and I'm gonna make them for them. And then you could, you know, shish them up even more if you wanted to. And I love it and I hope you do too. All right, so if you can't get enough of spring DIYs and decors, here's a video you're definitely gonna wanna check out. And I just want to remind all of my DIY goddesses out there that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.